OK, uh, welcome, everybody. I think by now you know who I am. I'm Tobias Fiebig. I do stupid things with packets, Linux, and routers, and other things um, in my day job as a researcher at the Max Planck Institute for Informatics. And today I'm here to talk about um, IPv4, which, of course, belongs to the IPv6 working group. Um, point being, uh, you need to stop doing IPv4-driven addressing plans. IPv4 has been around for 40 years. It still doesn't have a solution for making clean addressing plans. I mean, it's a total mess. I always wonder why is there CIDR, what, even if it makes me IP. Um, I want to work on layer three. Well, go to layer two first. And yes, please give me 50 different prefixes in a single metro. But like, what, what is that insanity? However, as we already learned and heard during the opening plenary, if we embrace our Lord and Savior RFC 8950, we can actually get rid of this. So quick refresher, ARP, address resolution protocol, figure out which MAC address to send packets for an IPv4 address to, construct Ethernet frame with fitting destination MAC. NDP, network discovery, uh, neighbor discovery protocol, figure out which MAC address to send packets for an IPv6 address to, construct Ethernet frame with fitting destination MAC. And you might have noticed that pretty much looks the same. Which brings us to RFC 5549 and 8950, uh, which basically RFC 5549 in 2009 was, what if we just put an IPv6 address into that nice next hop field of an IPv4 prefix in BGP. Well, what does happen is it works. And in addition, there's currently a draft in the ATF ongoing, which is like, um, how do we actually handle that if uh, we do have an IPv4 route with an IPv6 next stop? Essentially being like, ask for the MAC address you'd have to send packets for the IPv6 next stop to, and um, just send the IPv4 packet there. Um, and I'm actually looking forward to this draft, making it into an RFC somewhere. It's um, actually pushed not by me, but by uh, a couple of very awesome people making um, this work more in practice. So how does it look in terms of vendors? Um, generally having a BGP um, address family with uh, well, BGP uh, via uh, V6 neighbor with V6 next stops. Um, and exchanging V4 routes works well in Juntos, Arista, Cisco, XR BGP. Um, according to some documents, not for importing in the FIP on XR BGP, um, it works in FRR and it works in BERT. And um, actually sending packets in terms of like, you know, when it got imported into the FIP, um, it works really well on Juntos, Arista, Cisco, Linux uh, with like Netlink, and quite recently also in FreeBSD. So this is not like, a, thing that doesn't work in a lot of systems, actually does work. Oop. And then we can look at how you can do addressing with this. And what we have here is a relatively simple example network. We do have three gateways. Um, we are announcing our most favorite documentation prefix, the whole slash 32. Um, we do have two virtualization servers. We are using um, numbered IBGP between our gateways or virtualization hosts, speak BGP. Um, we can announce the um, global unicast address or prefix we assigned um, to the virtual machine in IBGP or any other IGP of our choice. I personally think that BGP is the coolest um, IGP you can get. Not willing to discuss this here and today. Um, and then we have somehow just have to get the assigned prefix on the VR01 host to the actual link local address and then everything works. And we do have a nice and clean IPv6 addressing plan, nibble boundaries and everything. If we now want to have IPv4, we don't really have to do that much. So if we have our eBGP sessions via IPv6, we just start announcing the extended next stop capability. <laughs> we send also the v4 route with ourselves as the v6 next stop. We do um, give our virtual machine a slash 32 from that slash 24, we set a static default route to FV80. And um, yeah, then we just have to like somehow tell all the other hosts how to get to that V4 place. And we can do that, for example, by statically injecting into our IBGP a slash 32 route with the GUA 
of a virtual machine as the next drop. And that, that is really, really nice because it means that the v4 address will always follow the v6 GUA, which also means that you can have a centralized global IPv4 EPUM and you just do your v6 EPUM as you would and the addresses will follow, meaning only one place to really care about mapping prefixes to addresses. Which also means that if you just migrate this virtual machine, as long as you take care of making the IPv6 GUA prefix you assign to the VM follow that VM, you don't have to worry about V4. V4 will come along, as any other deprecated protocol should, you know, following the future. So, REST remains the same. What this in summary gives us is that we have a very, very fine-grained routing of IPv4 in our network. So I currently have a test network going with this, where I have like the first slash 32 in a 24 in um, Düsseldorf, the second one in Berlin, the next one in Düsseldorf again, and then one other one in Amsterdam. So I, I can very cleanly route very small v4 networks through my whole internal setup. We can also handle IPv4 as a complete add-on. So imagine you are a large virtual machine hoster, cloud I think it's called nowadays, um, and you want to offer your customers the opportunity to not pay for IPv4 because honestly why should they pay for something they don't need? And then there are also those very special customers who do want to pay for that, well, with this, you can easily give that as an add-on while your overall setup has consistency for v6. The whole addressing plan can be IPv6-centric, clean. You don't need any IPv4 for transfer, router, network, broadcast, loopback, eBGP route, nothing. You just need IPv4 addresses at the terminus. We have seen it follows around, which also gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, and technically, there doesn't even have to be a loopback IPv4 address on routers. Um, even though for, for path MTU discovery, it's often a bit nicer if you can actually, you know, send packet to big messages. Um, that, sadly, somewhat needed. Um, it also means that you can have like legacy islands. Imagine you have like a very specific um, 7206. <clears throat> of course, nobody would still use that in production, right? Um, with some really nice uh, Sun OS 6, 7, 8, 9 boxes behind that, a legacy setup before only. Um, well, as long as you can get a router in front of that, that does V4 with V6 next stop and uh, next stop self towards the Cisco, you, you can just get it connected through your V4 with V6 next stop backbone. And of course, you can also always do this partially. So as we saw in the uh, opening plenary there it's mostly for like internal transport but you could technically also start with ebgp or any other part of your infrastructure um, there's currently also a working group at uh, eurix which looks into rfc 8950 at the ix which obviously has the benefit that renumbering becomes very very unlikely if you just have to use a slash 64. Um, in general, IXP prefixes should kind of not be globally reachable anyway, kind of nice. And technically, you should also originate ICMP for IX interfaces from loopback anyway, because there's some ASs which are dropping um, anything that's not in the GRT. Um, and if you do originate with your IX address, well, ICMP won't make it there, which can have dire consequences if you have an MTU break nearby. And we don't have to care about too many members anymore. I mean, how much time and energy did we put into that policy change to reduce the IX LAN default allocation size? Um, there's a couple of thoughts about this. Um, trace routes are less if you only have um, ICMP sources from router loopbacks or uh, completely useless, as we have seen in Jen's talk. Um, because if you don't have an IPv4 loopback or don't have any IPv4 on a router, you might end up with originations from um, like the default IPv4 address of last resort. Um, some client operating systems sadly are not that good with this. So OpenBSD, which is one of my favorite operating systems, 
um, is not that good with IP4, IP6 next hops. Um, you also need vendor support in your routing infra. Um, at the moment, I think the biggest vendor that is um, maybe not so good with this is um, Stream. Um, it, of course, obviously works best if you do have a clean IPv6 addressing policy. So if you are um, kind of slithering into this whole new v6 stuff, um, which has been you know new for the past 25 years, um, then, then it might be a bit more difficult to get this going cleanly. And of course, you still need working documentation, meaning you still need a working IPv6 environment. Otherwise, this will hurt. So what do we need to have a lot more fun with this? A better vendor support. Um, so currently, well, this, this has to be updated a bit. Um, this injection I showed you, so injecting a static route with an IPv6 next hop, uh, works currently with BERT and apparently also with XWGP, thanks to Ruben for testing that just before the stock. Um, it would be kind of nice to have something like DHCP v4 via IPv6 global unicast, because then you can actually get like um, v4 from one central location in your network only if and when you need it. Um, it would be cool if you could announce that somehow with some form of router advertisement option, because then you can tell your clients like, yeah, if, if you really need it, talk to that unicast server. Um, there, there's, of course, the option to make um, interface identification and trace routes better. Um, there could be something like RFC 4950 for v4 with v6 next hop, uh, some form of RFC 5837 plus plus, um, what Jen just presented goes roughly into the same direction. We need some way to, and more in generally, actually fix path MTU discovery. But it might also be easier to just find a way for nice time travel. And um, finally, um, a really nice goal would be an IPv4 free internet core. Like not only one AS, but everything. I'm allowed to dream. So. Um, doing this on uh, transport and eBGP for me. So in my own AS, so 59645, um, I killed IPv4 on all transfer links except for that one open BSD router. Um, this works well since over a year. Um, I'm using Junos and Vios, which is essentially FRR on Linux. Um, this whole thing uses some form of, um, yeah, please don't beat me for that, private ASN-based eBGP underlay. Uh, for loopback and link local distribution. Um, also works with stupid things like this. And um, yeah, I also set up a little test setup, um, which is AS215250, which um, just, just takes this to the extreme. So there I do not have any before on anything, just like in the example I showed, including eBGP. Um, currently um, there's five eBGP sessions without IPv4 plus some additional testing things. Um, this is two times upstream from AS59645 to uh, 215250, um, sending default routes. Um, there's uh, peering sessions because I need to harvest a higher local pref. Um, and then there's of course the BGP tools route collector, which worked out of the box. So big, big kudos to Ben because it well worked out of the box. In addition, um, this v 4 AS thing is, um, as I said, a dedicated test setup, um, where I also implemented a couple of testing scenarios. So um, there are paths with uh, MTU break and without an MTU break. So one time there is an MTU of 1,400 on the way. And um, those are also split in like having um, actual um, IPv4 unicast, ICMP sources on path and not. And I have a to be done of um, also announcing with this AS um, invalid prefixes, so you can test your filters. And testing is actually a good point. Um, the whole thing of this AS is that I'm currently bringing it to several IXPs. And um, there goes also a big thank you to the sponsors of this, like B6, D6, um, who already connected me to their IXs. Um, there's also Virtua, who got us to France IX. And if you're on any of those IXs and you want to test this, um, there's a pre-configured session, passive session, so I'm not annoying you, um, waiting for you. You just have to configure a session on your side. 
and you can actually try RFC 8950 on eBGP in practice and then use an analog ring nodes and write Atlas probes to see how your network behaves and how it looks from the inside and outside. More details on the web, um, measurement.network slash services slash v 4 as. And um, yeah, that should basically be it. <laughs>